And thank you, Dr. Alan Williams, for that beautiful affirming prayer. It just nurtured my soul, just fed me. I thought it was just gorgeous to listen to those words. How about you? What's feeding your soul? What's nurturing you? You know, we find within the ancient scripture and of course the Lord's Prayer, which we just heard so beautifully played, that phrase, give us this day our daily bread. It simply means and references to us, give us today what will nurture us for today. And of course, it's not just talking about our physical life, but our spiritual life. What nurtures you today, this moment? What's feeding you? What's feeding the soul? Because just as the body hungers for nutrition and it hungers for that which will sustain it, so too the soul is hungering for that which will sustain it. That truth that it wants to feed on, that nurtures it and encourages it and enables the soul to expand and to grow in spiritual understanding. That phrase, give us this day our daily bread, then really offers us this understanding that we need to seek a daily nutrition for the soul, a daily nurturing, a daily feeding. So we're looking for that bread of new understanding, we might say, a bread that takes us to a new level of comprehension, a new level of truth, something that really feeds that inner being within us, that soul. Well, today's scripture text offers us a true, delicious bite of nutrition, shall we say. Something that really will feed us in the power of truth and understanding. And it's found in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 7, which says, Blessed be the one who trusts in the Lord, and the Lord shall be his or her source. Blessed be the one who trusts in the Lord. And the Lord shall be the source. How beautiful that is. For we find this context of this nurturing truth for us is that if you're looking for this spirit of joy and happiness in the midst of a world of chaos and challenge, well, it's found when we simply begin to trust in God. That's the source of all the joy and perfect peace that we so desire in this world of chaos and all of its challenges. But we find as we are trusting, there is a spirit of joy, of happiness and contentment that can come to our life. So if you're looking for that source of happiness for you, it begins in a true foundation of trusting in the Lord with all your heart in all ways. You see, for the soul really wants to trust. That's right. That inner being that you are, that soul that you are, really wants to engage in a day-to-day -day experience of trusting. We want to have that full confidence in the world that all things are going to work for our good. We want to live from that perspective. The soul desires it. No one really wants to live in anxiety and worry and stress. But what happens is that this truth has slipped away uh, from us, this truth that when we're trusting in God, it brings about the happiness that we seek, the joy that we're seeking, and we find ourselves in very difficult situations. We find ourselves in the midst of stress and worry and fear and all these things that are truly needless. For that which nurtures the soul today, that delicious bread for this moment, for right here and now, and for every moment of our life, is to learn to trust fully, to really trust with such energy and such complete confidence that God is at work in the midst of everything. Our strongest level of trust is not found in this world around us and the limitations that it offers, for we know that all these things that we may trust in can break down. Faith, rust, they may not always be with us, but trusting in the spiritual realm of the divine, the truth of God, trusting in that, well, that's eternal. It always has been, it always will be, and it is right now. So the trust is meant to be a trust in God, trusting in this wonderful awareness of a divine source that's ever with us. As quoted in the beautiful prayer that Dr. Williams shared, God is with us, in us, around us, through us, and ever for us. How beautiful that is. So it's not just trust, it's trust in the Lord. Trust in God with all of our heart. Now we are created in the image and likeness of God. Don't forget that. 
we constantly let that slip away because that's who you truly are. You are the image and the likeness of God. That nurturing character within you, that is the likeness of God. That wonderful nature of patience and kindness, that love that you share, that's the very nature of God. It's that nature in which you've been created and that's the likeness of the divine that's shining through you at all times. Yet we allow sometimes the things of this world to disrupt our perfect peace. That's right. Your true nature, your true essence is that of perfect peace, of a sense of calm. That's the essence of what you were created in and the likeness that you were created in. You're not created in the likeness of stress and worry and fear and drama and all these kind of things. No, the real essence that you are, that God created you in, is an essence of perfect peace in the midst of all things. And our trust is often weak or shattered by the focus that we have on the events of the world. And we've taken our thoughts away from this divine power and presence. Instead, we're looking at, oh, wow, look what's, look what's happening in our world today. Look at the chaos around us. I don't know if I can really trust that today is going to be a great day or that tomorrow will unfold equal blessings. I don't know if I can trust in the circumstances of the world around us. Oh, but you can in this divine source called God. So we're learning. We're learning that this perfect peace is the essence that we're called to live in. Perfect peace. And you know, as we're learning, what we're actually doing is remembering. We're remembering where we came from. We are a divine creation and we came from the divine. We're remembering and re recalling, oh, we think we're learning something new. Actually, we're just rediscovering that which has always been. That you are meant to live every day in perfect peace. And that you can simply trust in that perfect peace unfolding in your life as you rest in God. Happy, blessed will you be. This is the scripture that says that we can feed on that and let that nurture us. Wow, I know that I'm going to have the happiness, the joy that I so seek in my life every single day, not just one or two days, every day, as I allow this to just sort of nurture my thoughts and feed my soul, that as I dwell in trusting in God for all things, it's going to happen for our lives. So what we're coming to is a place and a time right now in our lives when we need to embrace in a full throttle trust. Full throttle, that's, you know how it is? You're on the engine, there's a little throttle and sometimes you pull it a little bit, the engine begins to speed up and move a little quicker and then you pull it all the way open and whoa, the engine is roaring away. Well, that's what we're called to do in today's world. Live that full throttle trust life trusting completely, wide open in trust, and saying it's to the fullest level, to the highest extent, I believe that God is in control of all things within my life. Now, how do we get to that place? How do we come to a place of really experiencing that full throttle trust in our lives? It begins by us recognizing, first and foremost, we're a servant of God. We're a servant of God, and that servant's purpose is to reveal the divine, to show God, to reflect, to be the light of the world, to be a light that is a reflection of the divine presence. That's what we're called to do and that work that we need to do each and every day in this world that expands us and evolves our soul is one of living out this divine purpose. Be the servant, the worker, the one who reveals all the goodness of God for this world around us. Now, living your life as a servant of God means that you're serving out this divine source with you, within you. And to do so may require some challenges or tests that enable us to strengthen our life, to strengthen and to build and establish a strong spiritual essence within this world, spiritual presence. As a servant, meaning one who is fulfilling the divine desire. As a servant, the day-to-day -day challenges then are just the stuff of the day's labor. Now think of that. You know, think of somebody working in the fields, you know, 
they face some challenges. They face some weeds. They face some uh, maybe uh, animals. They face some challenges of the weather or the dryness in the soil. They face all kinds of things that are challenges for a field worker, correct? Well, we're working in the field of life and there are challenges. There's some obstacles. They're there for a specific reason. They're to help us really to go through these challenges in life and bring about a harvest. Just as you're going through a field worker, going through the fields, facing some of the challenges there, the end goal is to bring about a great harvest. So it is in our own individual life. The challenge you're going through, the obstacles you may be facing in your life, are there to help us understand that we are going to reap great rewards as we work through this because these are challenges for us to learn to be overcomers in. We realize then that these challenges are not something to fear, but they're opportunities. That's right, there's nothing for us to fear. Wow, yet we find in our world today, fear is gripping so many. I have so many people who are in conversations and saying, you know, I don't know how to face all that's going on in our world, in our society today. I don't know how to live in strength and I just really, this fear is just consuming me. Oh, but when we understand that we can trust in the Lord, what happens then is that this fear offers us, a that this uh, trust offers us a new way to look at fear, that simply these things that are coming to us are just opportunities for us to trust more. Because let me tell you this, nothing happens in our world, nothing happens in our life, without a reason. There's a reason. Now we may not always see the reason at the time that we're going through something. And that's one of the big challenges because we can't really value the experience what we're we going through it. So we're saying, I don't know why I'm going through this or why this is happening in my life or why I have to go through this, uh, I face this obstacle in my life. And we don't always see the outcome until something is completed. But what we are learning then is to trust day by day as we face these obstacles. But know that the obstacles are opportunities for us to then exude, exercise, to go to full throttle trust, to go to that level of saying, I am complete resting in God. And there I find that perfect peace. In the Old Testament, there's the story of the children of Israel out in the wilderness, seeking uh, food in a, in a desert land. And there they learned the power of trusting day by day in a fresh new way. That's right. The trust you had invested yesterday now needs to be refreshed and made new for this moment right here and now. For you see, as the children of Israel would wake up in the morning, there was manna from heaven that was brought from the sky. There was this wonderful, beautiful, delicious, sweet treat of bread that was there, manna for each one to go out and harvest catch was, it was only good for one day. Then there are those who think, well, I can stockpile it. I can collect it all up. I'll take my little Tupperware containers out and I'll take freezer bags and I'll do everything I can and I'll store it up for the whole week and I won't have to worry about it for tomorrow or the days ahead. But that man is spoiled. So what we learn from this is a beautiful spiritual lesson that there is no security about what will come tomorrow. We know that. There's no real security about what will come to in tomorrow. We don't know what all we're going to face, but we can know, we do know this, that we can trust that there will be blessings coming tomorrow, just as there are blessings in this moment. We may not know exactly what they are, but that trust says, if God has provided for today, God will provide for tomorrow. So people then go about their lives with this clear awareness that they had no control over their substance. They only could trust trust that they were going to be provided for and how important it is in our journey of our life. We don't know what tomorrow holds. We're only here for today in this moment right here and now. And we're trying to figure out, wait, what, what do I do with today? Well, we trust and tomorrow we trust again. And the next day we trust again. And each and every day we go out in this sense of renewed, refreshed daily bread of full throttle trust daily bread that nurtures the soul, 
daily essence, daily truth of understanding. I know that when I go forward every morning, I go out in trust. And the children of Israel in that wilderness would wake up in the morning with this sense of complete trust that there was going to be manna that day. And at the end of the day, when the manna spoiled, they woke up the next day going, I trust there's going to be manna for that day. And there was. And that's the beauty of the spiritual lesson for our lives. That when we simply trust in God in fresh new ways each and every day, something amazing happens. Because what we've learned is that in each day, we know that we have what we need for this moment. Too often, we're thinking, well, you know, I have just for today, but what about tomorrow? What about the next day? What about further down the road? What about 10 years down the road? I don't, I don't know how it's all gonna provide for, oh, wait, 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 wait. Just know that God has provided for you just what you need for right now, for this moment. And the manna is fresh right now in this moment. But know that for tomorrow, there'll be a call for you to trust again. And know that in that moment, you'll have all that you need for that moment as well. This calls us to live moment by moment, living in the now versus the tomorrows. I can't emphasize enough that sometimes we can't see the full picture of what we're going through or why we're going through it. It's easy to get the wrong impression about what's going on in our lives. And that causes us to be fearful and doubt. Instead of realizing that everything is happening for our highest and best and everything is happening for our good but we may not always see the reason why as we go through it personally for my own life my life partner of 20 years is dying of stage 4 cancer i don't know why why at 67 years is his life coming to a close with the doctor saying that you only have a few months to live. Why? It seems so strange. He should live a full life. There's something more that should be out there. I can't see clearly in this moment the reason why this is happening. When I pray and I believe and I trust, well, that's all I can do because I don't know all that's going on, but I know that what is going on is for my good and for his good. Now, that may seem strange for people to say, but how can you say that his sickness and his illness is for his good and for your good and for anyone else's good? You see, that's where trust comes into play. I trust in God. And this universe knows the highest and best for my life and for his life. So I may not in the midst of this understand why. Further down the road, I may. Maybe in eternity, I will understand and see it clearly. But for right now, the journey is for me not to be caught up in the why, 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 and the wondering, but to simply trust. God is at work in the highest and best for my Robert. God is at work in the highest and best for me. And that's trust. Trust is saying that no matter what mess mankind has made, no matter what the devastation, God can bring something good from it. No matter what we're going through and no matter how messy and how crazy it may seem, God can bring something good and intends to bring something good from it. For every obstacle, every challenge, everything is this opportunity for God to say, let me shine, let me radiate, let me reveal, let me show you the good. Trust me, I'm looking for the good in this situation and I know it's there. But sometimes our free will to ignore God at any moment will make this work world seem so difficult because we've ignored this wonderful power, this source of divine strength, this source of infinite possibilities that's working right now, and we've ignored it. We haven't paid attention. We haven't trusted in it. And then we wonder why we're not experiencing happiness. But blessed is the one who does trust. Blessed is the one for as we trust in this higher power, we know that something good can manifest out of every mess. Something good can manifest out of every situation. Something good and powerful will be unfolding for Robert as he steps into a transition of church to eternity. As he moves into that, the joy of being liberated from a body that's wracked with pain, as cancer is eaten away within him, I celebrate the good of that joyous moment for him 
as he steps into the eternal and as he transitions from this physical world. I just am thrilled for him and that joy fills my life of some good. I know the same will happen for my life too as I trust that there's something more that God has for me as well that may take me in new directions. I don't know the fullness of it all as through the why, but I simply do trust that something good is happening. For what happens in our life is that there's a stretching and a pulling of by love and by challenge that's kind of love pulls us, stretches us, the challenges pulls us and stretches us, things in life pull and stretches us as God is working in our life. It's kind of like eating bread. Any of you ever make bread from scratch? You know, or maybe you saw your mother or grandmother kneading that dough, pressing on it, working it, pounding it, moving it, just working through and through and through and as you do, what it does is it creates structure and strength in the dough. That's right. The pulling and the stretching, the kneading, creates structure and strength. It breaks down the gluten and it builds that resistancy within the dough to be able to rise to the occasion. So it is in our own life. Sometimes we're experiencing some stretching, some pulling, the Spirit of God kneading, working in our life. We think there are obstacles and challenges. Oh, there are opportunities where the highest and best is about ready to unfold and we're building now within ourselves a resilience. We're building with us now as things are breaking down within us to strengthen us, to make us rise to every occasion. You see what happens then is we are trusting. Trust loosens the grip that fear has. It loosens the grip on fear in our life. When we turn our soul over to the divine, we are calling on our highest natures and it elevates ourselves away from these animal instincts of fear within our lives. Our animal survival instinct would have us clinging in fearful moments, but the heart that's filled with trust offers no place for those feelings. Isn't that beautiful? We're so filled with trust, full of trust. Our cup is so full of trust that there's no room for anything else. Our problem is we haven't filled the cup up because we've left a little bit of room for fear to come in and we're stressed and worried in that process. But when we go to full throttle trust, it's like we have pulled it out of the throttle to the fullest level. We're moving at the highest level. There's no room for anything else because every aspect, every breath we take is I trust, I trust. I live in this confidence. I live in this insurance. Something good is happening right now in this moment in my life in the midst of the obstacles that I'm changing, I'm enduring. What happens is then that kind of full throttle trust transforms our lives from fearless beings to loving beings. Big difference. Where we respond then to every situation when we are trusting with great love. Knowing that love is there for us individually and love is there for us to give others because we simply trust in everything. You see, this is our bread for today. This is what nurtures us. Listen to this passage from Jeremiah 17 as we expand on the verses around this theme. Beginning in verse six, the writer of this text is offering to us a word picture what it's like to go through the day-to-day -day journey as a servant of God, facing obstacles, facing challenges, but they're called to deliver and to reveal the divine purpose of God in all ways. Verse six says, you will be like a shrub in the desert. A shrub, in the a bush that's growing in the desert, in the dry lands, in the dry places. You're gonna be, as you trust, like a shrub that's blooming, maybe an azalea bush in springtime with gorgeous colors. Maybe you'll be one that brings forth fruit, but you're going to be this shrub in the midst of what seems like the driest places of your life with obstacles and challenges. You will be like that. And you may not see, it says, he will not see when prosperity comes. Because we can't often see the end result. We can't often see the blessing. We can't always see when the fruits are gonna manifest. We can't always see these things, uh, but we will. It comes in due season. It says he will dwell in parched places of the desert and a salt land 
where no one lives. Even where it seems impossible when you are trusting, when you put your trust, even when it seems so difficult, like a salt land where nothing would grow, or a desert that's so parched, even when you're in those places, there is an opportunity for you to bloom, grow. But happy is the man or woman who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence, confidence is in God. I am trusting this divine universe that knows my highest and best. I release all reservations and anything that's holding me back. I let go of fear and doubt and worry and stress because I am confident then, confident in God leading my pathway and confident that God is showing me step by step every way, how to move, every way, every movement. And then verse eight, here's the beauty. This is what happens when you trust. You're gonna be like a tree planted by the waters. You'll be like that even though you're in the desert. You're gonna be just like a tree that's planted by the waters that sends out its roots into the stream where the very foundation of your life is being nurtured by these wonderful streams of thought that are going of goodness of God. It says, and does not fear when he comes. That's right, doesn't fear when heat comes. The tree is just being nurtured. And when the sun is beating down so hard on you and beating down and saying that you feel like you could be burned to a crisp or dry you up, mm -mm -mm, you don't fear it. It says for this that the leaves are always green, always green in the midst of no matter what challenge you're going through. And it does not worry in a year of drought nor does it cease to produce fruit. When we trust, you're ever producing fruit. That's the beauty. Wow, that's the truth that nurtures our soul today. When you're facing these fears and worries and stress in your world, this full throttle trust then takes you to this place where you are now the brush, the bush, the shrub that's in the desert that is blooming and leaves are green and nurtured by a stream of water that's sustaining you to the place where you are constantly producing, constantly producing great fruit and blessing. It never ceases. So today, our call is to trust in the Lord with all your heart on a day-to-day -day basis, no matter what you're going through. And to pull the throttle wide open, full throttle trust where you're just saying, I am completely given over to trusting in God's guidance within my life. This is the bread that nurtures our soul. As we pray, give us this day our daily bread. Feed my soul, nurture my soul right now. It's nurtured in this truth. Blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord. Amen.